Sean, are you ready? I should probably say that again without like punching the mic. <laughs> Sean, are you ready? I'm ready. Um, I think we are actually going to start with, did you wait? Okay. Three, two, one. Hey. Oh. Na, 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 na. It's good to have you back, Jihai. <laughs> I like the usage of vocal chops to create yeah. the groove. Hey! I want that little butterfly sample. The voice. And the whistle as well. I think that intro did exactly what the title says. It's Did You Wait? It, it like summarizes the nostalgia we feel for Odd Eye Circle sound and for Luna sound and mixed it with, you know, something new. Like, hey, we're going to continue this sound with this comeback. Yeah, I agree. Like very disorienting beginning with all of the times it would just break up. But having timbral dissonance in that resolving to very clean types of sounds later on. Right, are you saying like the psh, psh yeah. part? Yeah. Mm. And then we just like, we settle into this vibe that I can't describe it any other way other than it sounding like Artemis, like Luna. Yeah. Do you know, Sean, it, does Jihai like gravitate towards a specific synth or timbre? Do you think that like helps summarize their sound? Yes. I feel like it's Why? more the use of the seventh chords. Oh, Luna uses seventh chords more than other groups? Uh, I feel like also just the way it moves among them. It might even just be, at least in this one, the way it's rocking between two, two seventh chords a lot. Mm. Like that was a very, that was a lot of butterfly. Oh, so that's why we were able to make that connection in our minds, like the rocking between two yeah. seventh chords. That connection. Let's go, je ne sais quoi. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. I probably didn't. Three, two, one. I don't know that. Good That's, chords. Yeah, that was not the third chord I was expecting based on the first two. The producer's name is Bad. B-A-D-D. -D. That's very reverby. Ooh. So a lot of notes are like overlapping with each other. You just see a whole bunch of colors pass by your eyes. I love how syncopated the bass is. Yeah. Yeah, even with the. Well, okay, stop. The kick was very much, I think, four on the floor, or either the kick was four on the floor, or the snare had a bit of sub in it. And so, the, like, that kind of pushes the bass to be syncopated so that it's not competing with space. Going from belts to gentle head voice. I need a lighter. Yeah, I mean, this level of reverb on the vocals. I feel like you just about don't encounter outside of a Jaden John group. Or like you might have at least this amount of wet reverb like consistently as they're singing. Like lots of things have it where the reverbs push down as they're singing and then as they stop it blooms out. But like here the vocals are constantly, not constantly, That's but- That's more, a little bit more dry. Yeah. That is a nice contrast. Like, I do like- Oh! No, there's some. Um, the vocals are still pretty wet. 
Not as much as like the Genesequa part, of though. That was a nice little spit of sound design of. I like those use of sliding sounds. I was about to say that the track provides a lot of nice motion forward and interaction with the melody. Layers. Wow. I don't know, it's probably because of the amount of reverb, but I was almost a little bit overwhelmed. I wasn't sure what I should listen to, and I was listening to something different every second. So in the end, like it felt like that is a song that you can definitely sink into. Yeah. But like Reverb. I don't know. Re reverb blurs things, so it's like you tend to yeah, have yeah. It was a blurry less, experience. Yeah, like you have less clarity of like what each individual sound is like with that. But yeah. it also like it, that's not a criticism. It's just like if you want if you want each sound to be very clean, clear and precise and like sitting in its own space and nothing's overlapping, like um. Like S Class by Stray Kids. That is a very clean song. Not a lot of reverb. Everything just is perfectly where it is. Here it's like everything's been put through a blur and it sort of smooths the edges and mixes them together. And it's like, it, it's really nice. It's just like a different aesthetic. That's, this is not a criticism right. of either one. Like, I think they both do their chosen aesthetic well. And this one, like the title means, I don't know. I don't know what. So perhaps it's just they created that atmosphere purposely to support the lyrics. Whereas for me, just like first listening experience, I was like, I'm not 100% sure how to feel about this because it felt like such a blurry experience. And I was like, I'm floating somewhere, but I don't know exactly where. But I did like the colors that I experienced. It was just, it felt like a little bit too many on first listen when I'm like fully delving into like analyze mode. I feel like it did a good job contrasting like very straightforward elements with very fluid elements. Like the beat, mm. a lot of the beat is just kick, snare, kick, snare. And maybe the, right. I think there might also be, as I said, either the snare's a bit subby or the kick uh, is also lighter on the snare and is four on the floor just with the snares on the off beats. Um, like that's very square for a lot of it. And then like the bases are very syncopated, but rhythmically defined. But then a lot of other things are like, and also like, I shouldn't say just rhythmically defined. The bases are also pretty pitch defined. Like it's just, it's a block right. with a clear note, but like a lot of other stuff. Is I like the bass. Like sliding around and as an engine reverby. So I think it's a nice contrast between the very dry, clear uh, elements and the very amorphous elements. Well said. Let's move on to Lucid. Three, two, one. I'm already like, I'm fully immersed in this song already. I like the, the little- chords, sounds chosen. Record, crackle. Well, also the little pitch driftiness on it. That. Nice bass part. Le little leaping. Yeah, sing it. That was a nice riff. Another song that for a while is just two chords, two seventh chords. Interesting. It's very hypnotizing. Or immersive, not necessarily hypnotizing. Oh, they even have a trap I have, but I don't mind it. Typically, I'm not a big fan of trap. I, I feel like the, the fact that it's swung helps it. Oh. Like, it feels 
like, yes, it's it's an electronic beat. Like, it doesn't feel like an actual jazz sort of hi hat, but it, the swing on it, and not just like, uh, keeps it a bit more engaging and ties it a little more to jazz. Right. Nice vocal harmonies. Ooh. Feels like a this main synth line providing the chordal structure. Oh, there's strings now. Anyways, it's like I imagine a jellyfish. Yeah, I can see it. And they hit us with the string patch. I love this vocal melody. Woo! So dainty. Oh. Yeah, first first new chord after those. I think G sharp half diminished. Okay. I think the repetition of the chords works in my mind. Da, 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 da. Because of how many new track elements they introduce yeah. that adds a new color to the repetition. Like that main synth line. Da, 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 da. Oh, I enjoyed that one. Oh, it just, it, it like, softened the edges of my anxiety. <laughs> If that makes any sense. Like you're nervous, but like it slows down your heartbeat. And it's like, like jellyfish is like I was saying. It's just like it provides a rhythmic, really nice atmosphere with some like little, like I said, dainty vocal melodies on top that make it a little bit more rhythmically active and um, characteristic the way that they slid up to the higher and higher notes. Mm, I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, I think also sitting a bit on the upper upper parts of the chords like or like the, the thirds and the sevenths of chords a bit like brings out a nice color when i say sing, uh, the melody sitting on those right where it had the most amount of that i feel like just sitting on like thirds and sevenths added a nice like it emphasized some of the more colorful parts of the chords in a nice way right so that was a very palatable colorful sort of listening experience. Whereas the last one, right? We were saying it's like nice and schmoochy. This one is very this one's more, clearly. Yeah, much more clear. But it's like watercolor. So it's still gentle, but very clear. But that makes sense. Like Luna in general and perhaps even more, like especially like classic Luna back closer to like the subunit stuff tends to have a little, a bit more of that very reverby sound. Yo, this next song is the producer who did Olivia Hayes' Egoist. Ooh, okay. That's one of my favorite of the solo songs. They did I'll Be There for Hee Jin Hyunjin. Um, they did You and Me Together. Uh, fairy Tale, Chaotic. And they also did Triple S Rising. Oh, nice. It's like, where have I seen this name recently? Triple S Rising. Okay, well, we're ready for some Artronic wave sound. Three, two, one. Is that just a super low passed voice? Oh. That's not- I feel the, like you know, that cat meme where like they put a flower on the cat's head and it goes like this and it like- Yeah. You know? <laughs> Oh, 
two, three, four, hit. Two, three, four. Hit. Hard pan, little. <laughs> nice little sparkle. What up? Sine wave in there. That sine wave is confusing me. Woo! Well, that went from major to minor so fast. Yeah! Nice use a lower octave there. It felt very asmr -y. Now it sounds like a video game. Yeah, it was more square-y. Either bit crushed or square waves. And it sounds like they're layering both pops and snaps. I like the clap. This is one of those songs that they have a lot of sounds going on, but it's a little bit easier to pick each apart. Yeah, well, it's not very wet. And also, I think... It's dry, that's why. Okay. There's this man's voice on one, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four. One, three. Who? 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 What is he saying? He keeps traveling from ear to ear. I don't want to lose you to that is take it zoom zoom zoom. Oh, I love that little octave. Wow! Interesting, like having the... Like, initially sounds like it's probably going to be in G, or maybe going down from B, but like the A is actually the tonal center, like the middle note in that. Uh, the is the tonal center. Yeah, like it does fit in. Like I like that at the end you got to hear that clearly again. So it's like you you hear how it fits in tonally with the rest. Right. Lots of sounds that did come back but didn't like didn't try to go constantly. Like the little our ar quick arpeggios that would like have a few bursts. Um, but it wasn't just like constantly which I feel like I would have gotten tired of. But or it would have been too odd fronty maybe. Their song odd front. Yeah. My only squabble, which just might be a me problem, is that I was so entranced with the track, I kind of forgot everything that happened vocally, other than like the lower octave of the mmm -hmm coming in, yeah. in that vocal melody. Like I was just so pulled in by the different sounds in the track that I kind of forgot that there were vocal. Was that also for you, Sean? Or I, you, I also, I think, also was listening? mostly paying attention to the track. Although I feel like that's a pretty common state for me. I do tend to focus more on the tracks. So yeah. I, I think I, I, that is the case here. But that's it's maybe not as telling the fact that I did that. I, I didn't have anything against the main vocal melodies. Like they weren't, they, they didn't feel like they were failing to live up to the track. It just, there, there were a lot of, different sounds going on and also interesting key area switching yeah harmonic yeah stuff yeah lots of things where it would like really briefly have a major third for like one beat like we hear lots of songs go between having a major and minor third like that's been it's at least been a big thing in k-pop since shiny uh sherlock and dream girl we have the course of a few beats in the chorus but i feel like this is a faster uh, switch than I'm used to. Also, maybe the fact that it's going like hitting major and then very quickly going minor. I might be more used to things hitting minor and turning major. Going to major, right. The fastest major, major to minor. mixture in K-pop, question mark. We don't know. But yeah, no, that's what add, helped add color to this track is having those moments throughout. And 
changing up the chord progression because like the last few songs were a lot of just but that was yeah. a vibe yeah but this is a new vibe so i'm yeah. glad they threw this in there yeah it was like also just texture wise that track was a mixture of so- sounds like specific sample sounds that were very familiar and sample sounds that i like i haven't heard before so that was also an interesting experience okay my secret playlist three two one d high Another bump and kick drum. Yeah, I, it, some bars it's the same pattern as Air Force One, but sometimes it's adding more. Woodblock, beautiful textured vocals. Halftime. Mm. Mm. What the heck? That sounded like a zipper. Oh, more modal mixture. Yeah. Is there some clash there with the vocal line and the chord? Uh, maybe. <gasps> and reverb! Yeah. This song feels like a summary of like uh, <laughs> a huge uh, elements and characteristics of the past couple of songs of this album. Yeah. Oh, there was a funk guitar? I don't think it used a cymbal roll that time. I never see the halftime coming. <laughs> the, <laughs> the yeah, I don't know if there was just like some sample being iterated very fast, but like extremely short sample. Is the hook different? Was it the same last time? Yeah, okay, there, there is, but they're staying on the minor third when the uh, instrumental hits the Hold major up. third. What? What? We're in a jazz bar? And now we're back. The chorus, but most of the instruments aren't there. I guess, was it a playlist of different sounds? Is that why we had the sudden halftime and the sudden genre switch in the bridge? Maybe. So right there, during that hook, they sing the minor third while the major third's in the chord underneath? Yes, yeah, like the, the chorus goes from minor to major. I think pretty similar, like at either four to four minor four or maybe flat six. Or maybe there might be some flat seven in there. But then it lands on major tonic. I'm still hanging around. Okay. Yeah, because as I was listening to that chorus, I'm like, something sounds like we're building tension and releasing it, but it sounds like there's still some sort of tension there. So that was bugging me the entire time. I'm like, there's tension, worry, I should feel release. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, so in the end, that had very specific standout characteristics that I could pinpoint to the other songs, but yes. I did prefer some of the other songs more than this one. Like, normally I have very distinct favorites. I, I do think Air Force One is probably my favorite overall, but among the B-sides, I feel like I liked them, at least currently, a pretty similar amount. Pretty equal. Just, yeah, for different reasons. Like, normally there's a clear, like, one or two standouts, but this time, I, it feels like they were all all solidly good and contrasted well with each other so thanks for watching everybody i are artemis's fans still called orbits or are they gonna be called something else for now thank you orbits for watching here are our final rankings in three two one whoa <laughs> whoa 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 whoa
Let's pump it up, D. Don't, 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 don't